Vinny Politan. This is Closing Arguments, and this is a big, big night in the case against Lori Daybell. This is a huge night. You know I've been worried, and you know why I've been worried. Been here before, in another case with another woman with seemingly overwhelming evidence, but not that one piece of evidence that seals the deal. And she was set free down in Florida. I'm not going to mention her name. Don't need to. So I've been worried from the beginning with this case. Um, but then I think about this case and what the evidence is and what happened today, how important it is. It reminds me of another case, Scott Peterson. It was a circumstantial case. They couldn't, they couldn't get any evidence to put Lacey in the, in the little boat that Scott Peterson used to dump her body in San Francisco Bay. But they were able to link it. There was one hair found in a clipper that, that, that belonged to Lacey. And that gave the jury some physical evidence to convict Scott Peterson and send him to death row before the judges took him off of death row. So that's huge. So now I want to remind you about some of the, the testimony and, and circumstances surrounding the death of little JJ. Take a listen. So after the sealed black body bag was opened uh, and you can see here that the body is further uh, enclosed within a black uh, plastic tarp that's held together with multiple strips of duct tape. And you can also see that the forearms and the wrists and the hands are tightly bound with, with duct tape as well. The ankles are bound with duct tape as well. Duct tape, black bag, wrapped up when he was buried in Chad's backyard. But we've got, you know, evidence putting Alex Cox there. We've got evidence putting Chad Daybell there. How do we get Lori Daybell there? How do we get her connected physically to the death of little JJ? She filed an alibi in this case. Didn't happen in my apartment. Oh, no, no. Go check Uncle Alex's apartment. That's where it all happened. We'll take a listen to what the jury heard today. In May of 2022, I received three DNA profiles. Um, these were from Lori Vallow Daybell, Ty Lee Ryan, and Melanie Gibb. I also received several items of evidence, one of which was processed as Bodhi E01, which was a hair attached to a piece of adhesive. And do you recall if there was a an Idaho State Lab number associated with that piece of evidence? Um, yes, there was, and I'm going to look at the report. Okay, would that refresh your memory? Yes, it would. And this is 2019-05298. Is, is that the agency number? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. My, my question probably wasn't very clear. Uh, the, you mentioned a, a piece of hair that had been stuck to adhesive. Yes. Uh, was there an evidence number uh, from the agency, uh, submitting agency, assigned to that specific piece of evidence? Yes, there was. And I'm going to look at the report to refresh my memory. That was 11168B. Thank you. Uh, how was this evidence processed? So similar to the process that I described before, um, a portion of this submitted hair item was taken forward and put into a test tube. It went through a series of washes um, to get rid of any extraneous DNA that may have been on the hair. We were trying to focus on the hair itself. Then uh, additional reagents and chemicals were added to the sample, and it went through a series of heating and cooling steps to isolate any DNA that may have been present. We determined how much DNA was present in that sample, then made lots and lots of copies, put that on a genetic analyzer, and analyzed the data that was obtained using a computer software program. What results were obtained from your analysis? So from the uh, Bodhi item E01, which was the hair sample, a partial female profile was obtained. And were you able to make any conclusions based on those results? Yes. Tylee Ryan and Melanie Gibb were excluded as, as possible contributors of that partial DNA profile. 
um, the partial DNA profile matched the DNA profile that was provided for Lori Vallow Dayville. Boom! There it is, folks. There it is. An invitation to this jury to feel much more confident if they believe the rest of the evidence all adds up here circumstantially. Now you've got some more circumstantial evidence, but it's physical evidence. Not just actions, not just looking at wedding rings, not just talking about uh, zombies. Physical evidence that you know jurors just love. Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, joining us live from outside the courthouse in Boise. I had no idea, Chanley, that any evidence like this even existed in this case. This is enormous. Yeah, it's huge. We did not know until today. They brought in this DNA expert from a private company to test, uh, to have some special testing on this hair. This hair video that was found within duct tape that was on the large black plastic bag that covered J.J. Vallow's full body. It was all collected during his autopsy. They found this hair, uh, and one in 71 billion was the number that she put for the strength and certainty that this was Lori Vallow Daybill hair DNA on that little boy's duct tape so let's this is significant where it's found also right this is very important information it's found on the bag that's covering little JJ because any mother who is who, who has a child may have some hair on the child because hopefully you're hugging your child and you're spending time with your child right so I could see that but this is no mm -hmm. he's dead and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and duct taped and that's where it is. That's right. So poor little JJ had duct tape, of course, on his mouth, on his um, wrist, and on his ankles, Vinny. And then he had a plastic bag over his head with more duct tape co covering his forehead to all the way down to his neck. And then another plastic uh, garbage bag on him that was also wrapped extensively in duct tape. Oh, I forgot the duct tape from his elbow to elbow, too. I mean, it's just it's horrific, uh, the amount of uh, duct tape and, and plastic bags on this little boy. This was on the outer black plastic bag that uh, you know, the first thing the authorities saw when they unearthed him in Chad Daybell's backyard. Uh, they had the duct tape on that. That's where the hair would have been lodged or stuck on on that layer. Uh, when they, of course, unearthed him, they cut it back enough to know that where they could see his, you know, brown hair to know that it was a body and before they transported him in the body bag. Now, the defense, Vinny, wants to say that, you know, it was in a body bag. Things float around in a body bag. This tape, uh, this hair could have gotten stuck on that part of the tape at some other point. Uh, it could have been on his PJs um, because they didn't cross that today, which surprised me. But like you said, they can argue that in, in closing arguments that, you know, he lived lived with Lori Vallow Daybell, you know, it's, uh, yeah, people have other people's DNA on them that live in the same home all the time. So uh, we'll see where they go with that. They also tried to attack the science behind it too, comparing it to the FBI database. They, you have to have a certain number of characteristics in common. 20 is that number we learned on cross-examination. This was missing 13 and only three were required because it's a, a partial sample and it's only for a comparison. But like I said earlier, on redirect, the prosecutors were able to kind of uh, rehabilitate that and show the strength of this and what actually was at issue here, which was not the FBI database testing. Yeah, this is, a, how about reaction at the courthouse today? Yeah, so as you can imagine, um, everyone in the courtroom, when they say that Lori Vallow's DNA is on something at a crime scene, right? I mean, that grabs your attention. It was a little bit, it wasn't clear that this was on J.J. Vallow's duct tape, right? They didn't say his name at all during the testimony, but these jurors are astute. Uh, they can put these pieces together, and of course, prosecutors will make it very clear, right, Vinny? But in the gallery, we knew exactly what they were talking about, especially the Woodcocks, uh, Larry and Kay, who were inside the courtroom all day long, uh, taking note of this. Larry tells me, Vinny, he did not know about this either. He did not know until this expert said it, that Lori Vallow's hair DNA found on duct tape on his grandson's body and he said that to him is like the nail in the coffin and like we said earlier like might as well take your picture and put it in there with the body bag yeah this is enormous there's a lot of other evidence a lot of other circumstances 
but now they've got physical evidence to add to all of it. Chanley Painter at the courthouse in Boise, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's bring in our think tank. Joining us tonight from Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, Al Wunsch III. Joining us from Stanford, Connecticut, criminal defense attorney, Darnell Crossland. And in the Bronx, New York tonight, criminal defense attorney, Renee Hill. Welcome on this Monday night. What a, what a great Monday night, by the way, uh, for prosecutors in this case. Um, you, you know, Al, as I look at this piece of evidence, to me, it's, it's poetic justice. This is a woman who, to this day and every day in the courtroom, takes so much pride in that mane of long, curly blonde hair that it is, in fact, that curly blonde hair that is now tying her to the death scene of her own son. Yep, very true. And, you know, since there was sort of like religious overtones to this case, I look to the scripture as performed by the band Nazareth, and there's a line that goes, Red Hot Mama, Velvet Dreamer, Time's Come to Pay Your Dues. And the name of that song, and I'm going to paraphrase now, is Hair of the Dirty Dog That Killed You. So that's what we have here. We have the hair of the dirty dog that killed that poor child, and it's going to be a hard thing to overcome for the defense. It's going to be very difficult. I mean, they'll throw out some doubts. They'll try to throw out some things that says it's not as big as everyone's making it out to be. But the bottom line, it's the hair of the dirty dog that killed you. And like I said, you know, it's 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 over, Johnny. You know, Darnell, um, she she claims to have an alibi for all this, and they were basically saying all this stuff happened, all this bad stuff happened over at Uncle Alex's apartment, but that blonde curly hair is there. What are they gonna say? Are they gonna say that, that uh, uh, Lori uh, was simulating sex acts with her brother again and that's how the blonde hair got there? Is that gonna be the defense? What are they gonna do here? I'm, I'm sure Al, Al, Al once is connected to this crime somehow, but we'll figure that out later. Um, but what's important here is that um, Chanley Painter says she was surprised. Vinnie Politan was surprised. But guess who wasn't surprised? The defense. This had to have been turned over in discovery. So if this was turned over in discovery, I'm sure this wasn't a big surprise to the defense, and they knew it was coming. So obviously, as we already heard, they're going to start uh, reviewing uh, these statistical numbers. Uh, and if those statistical numbers are vulnerable to attack, the defense is going to attack those numbers. Because the one thing that I always tell juries is you, you shouldn't convict somebody based on statistics. This is not one of those situations where statistics alone should do it. Give us something else. That, so, as you said, maybe if the statistics are strong enough, uh, a strike that, if the, if the other evidence is strong enough and statistics can get them over the top, maybe, but not just alone on statistics. So, so far, they haven't been doing good on the hard facts, and they're going to continue to hammer away at these statistics, saying this shouldn't get us over, over the um, plate, on plate. All right, Renee, I have some stats to throw at you, but I just want to ask Al real quickly. Um, Al, how many people are in the world, do we know? Ballpark it? I don't even know. Two, carry the one. About, like, 12. 12. Well, <laughs> Renee, here's the thing. They're saying it's one in 71 billion. So I, th I don't think there's 71 billion people on Earth. <laughs> so I think it's her hair. Except for my Twitter followers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, I think that they will have a harder time um, discrediting the fact that it is Lori's hair. The issue that I have is that I don't think that that is necessarily the smoking gun in this case, because the defense will be able to argue that there are other reasons why that hair ended up in that location. Oh, well, sure, Renee, Renee, explain it to me. Show. Explain it to me. Again, it's not well, on JJ. It's not on JJ. It's on the bag that is used to wrap his body for a murder right. that Lori says took place at Uncle Alex's apartment. Other people who have been around Lori. Lori has been in other places. The hair could be transferred on anything. It's one single hair, right? It could have been on someone's sweater, someone who is involved in 
in this in this matter, right? Lori is not connected directly to this, although morally and everything now she else, is. Yeah, people believe now it. But, she is. But it's one hair that could have been transferred on another article okay, of Okay, Renee, clothing, be, be 100% honest problem. now. Renee, be 100% honest. If that yes. one hair belonged to somebody else, right? Some Somebody else, like... Wouldn't you be pointing the finger at that other person? Of course, because that's okay. what we have to do. Thank you have you. to show that it is connected to someone else. But in this instance, Goose yes. and Gander do we expect, here. Do Goose we expect that Lori's hair could be there? Absolutely. But there are other individuals that are alleged to be involved that have been around Lori that it could have been transferred by. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's going to fly, but oh, this okay. is what the defense is going to argue. Okay. It's going to be a point of contention where they could try to raise some doubt. Now, there are so many other things going on in this case that it's probably not going to be enough to put reasonable doubt into the minds of the jury. But it's something that they're going to argue. And I say that it's not the smoking gun. Okay. If there and are other things there that will help it along, of course, yeah. that's But, but we do know it was not Darnell. We know it was not Darnell's hair. Is that, Absolutely. that ship has sailed. <laughs>